Hey everybody, Judah Hoover here coming to you uh, from the Landlords and Investors Mastermind Group walking another uh, really cool property here in Reading. This is going to be like a B plus a minus uh, type property and you know the the title of this one is don't judge a book by its cover i'm very familiar with this uh part of uh red west writing so it's a there's Reading and then there's West Reading, totally separate municipality. It's not just like, you know, the Western part of Reading or anything like that. And over here in West Reading, really nice, desirable place uh, for rentals. And uh, the all these brick homes were built and they just go and go and go for forever. Um, don't judge a book by its cover when you see stuff like this, because even though there's very little architectural detail on the outside, and sometimes that would hold back what you could get for rent or what you could get um, for, uh, you know, if you're going to buy them and fix them and sell them, um, in a neighborhood like this, when you know the housing stock and you know what else has been sold, uh, it can be a good and bad situation because you could look at comps and say, wow, a lot of these are selling really high, but if you don't have the same fit and finish on the inside, uh, you might not get the same value. Uh, conversely, uh, if you um, are looking to buy something, you might be able to get a little bit of a better uh, deal on it uh, because there hasn't been as many of just the, all the little teeny tiny upgrades. All those little teeny tiny upgrades usually don't make a difference in value and any, uh, you know, real estate investor worth their salt will tell you that but in a neighborhood like this uh, they certainly do and so we're gonna walk on the inside we're gonna take a look at this property uh, we're gonna get to meet the owner we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about what is going on but I'm very excited uh, about this B quality B plus a minus uh, quality property okay uh, now on the inside of the property uh, with my uh, friend Raquel. Uh, hey Raquel, how are you? Hello, I'm good. Say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. So, Welcome. so uh, Raquel and I met at April Crossley's uh, Real Estate Investors um, Christmas party, and uh, Raquel and I, Raquel, we literally right ran into each other. Yeah, like, oh, like she was so standing funny. there with Running a friend, ran into her, yeah. and she was like, "Hey, you're Judah, who does all those videos," and I was like, "Yeah, hey, that is me," um, and. I was really humbled and blown away because there was a number of people like Raquel at that uh, event who came up to me and said how much these videos mean to them. And my goal with these videos, I think as a real estate investor, you need to walk 200 properties. Uh, I think that walking 200 properties just gives you a good feel for your market and you know what's going on and you know what's happening. And so Raquel said, hey, Judah, um, I love your videos because it gives me a feeling and a sense for you know kind of what's going on with properties. Right. Um, and she said, um, I know you're a little nervous and still in work mode, so I'm going to talk for you. And you feel, <laughs> Thank you. You feel okay. free to disagree no, if I say anything that's not yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. But Raquel said, hey, Judah, I'm getting started in real estate investing. Yes. Uh, I want to uh, buy my first property, but I realize I've lived in my house for five or six years? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm wrong yeah. So she's built up a little bit of equity, uh, which is great because, you know, the rent has gone up in that time. And so sometimes when you buy a property at market price, it's hard to get it to cash flow right away. But so rents have gone up. Her mortgage price has stayed the same. Maybe gone up a little bit because of taxes and insurance. Right. But, you know, when you lock in 30-year fixed money, hey, don't sell it and take that equity and do another deal with it. Right. It's called, it's, it's a modification on house hacking. Technically, when people say house hacking, they mean... Multi buy a multi, live in one, rent the other. But that's essentially what you're doing here is you're turning your existing house into your first rental. Correct. You're yeah. going to go buy a different house and live in that and make that your first house or your your net, your net your primary residence. And this is going to be uh, your first investment property. It is. And, and I so think exciting. it's, I mean, I would tell you this off camera if I didn't think this, but I'll also tell you to you on camera. I think this is a great first rental. Awesome. I think this is, I, I really don't think you could do better uh, for a first rental. And what's also cool about it is you've lived here. So I think hopefully the people watching at home just get inspired by that idea. So let's walk this house and talk about it as we go. Yeah. All right. So as we talked about when we were outside, um, some of these properties have a whole lot of upgrades and some of them don't have a whole lot of upgrades. I think that what's cool about Raquel's house is it's kind of like 50-50 in the middle. So when she bought this, um, she was telling me there's all kinds of wallpaper on the walls and really ugly uh, you know, wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. And what she's done is just remove that wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, which shows off this gorgeous hardwood floor, 
pulled down uh, the wallpaper and painted, done some really nice decorative pieces. Um, and when you do that to a property, this property needs nothing really. I want to say that right from the outset, that this property needs basically nothing really uh, to turn into uh, a rental. So we've got a nice living room and a nice uh, dining room there. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about the kitchen. But the first thing we're going to do, as you know, if you've watched any of these videos with me, is I head straight for the basement and say, what am I seeing in the basement? Uh, this is... Armstrong tile flooring. I know that because my father worked at the plant for 14 years or 19 years and I see it every place I go um, or whenever I do see it, I, I recognize it. Uh, so this is like one of those half finished basements, not going to be able to be counted in square footage for an appraisal or for a sale. But when you see below grade, that's kind of half finished like this, um, Raquel, that you have three bedrooms upstairs. Yes. Okay, so I would market this for rent, and you should market this for rent, um, assuming you choose a high-quality property manager. Um, you should market this as three bedrooms could be four, so that people know when they're coming, oh, there's something a little different about it. It could be, because this space could definitely be used as a fourth bedroom. I Also, this like half bath that you have over here, Again, not going to help you with resale value or comps or appraisal, but it is going to help you a lot in the rental market. Add more functionality to all this down here. Uh, very common when you see some of this uh, older housing stock that was built for very utilitarian, you know, worker class type uh, personnel when it was first built, that you've got half the basement finished, half the basement unfinished. And this over here in the unfinished basement side of things, uh, we see a little workbench. We see a gas hot water heater with an expansion tank and an exhaust line running out. The other thing that we see over here is a gas forced air system. So what that means is it would not be difficult at all to, oh, and look at that. This vent right here very important to notice this. This vent right here means that the space we are in right now is conditioned space. So it just makes that much easier to sell this as actual uh, living space. So sometimes you don't see this vent here. Sometimes you do see this vent here. If you see this vent here, it just makes it that much easier to sell. And by sell, I mean convince or talk to people. You're never going to be able to convince an appraiser, but uh, that just makes us more livable and more comfortable when you're down here. Um, Raquel, do you have AC in the in the property right now? No, just window units. Okay, just the window units. So because this is a forced hot air system, when you go to sell this three to five years from now, Raquel, one of the things that you can do is you can just buy the compressor because oh. you already have all the duct work and everything like that. And it's a natural gas system, so it's so it's very efficient. Now at that time, you may need to upgrade the furnace or not, but one of the things that people worry about is running the duct work. You've already got the duct work run. Awesome. I'm gonna tell you about something else that I see over here. Now Raquel, was this like this when you built this, when you bought this, or was this? That, that was like that when I bought it. That was like that, okay. Mm -hmm. So some people might see that and get concerned. What we have here is this is the main sewer stack is what this is called and at some point there was a repair made there see this was all at one point white pipe somebody put in uh that's black sometimes that would be pvc or something like that and then there's these two um coupling and joints right there uh to bring that together that doesn't scare me so at some point the property might have been vacant and what can happen there is the the material on the inside of the uh, stack can really harden and stiffen up and then it like flakes off really gross to think about uh, and then water starts coming through it again and all of a sudden oh my goodness now we've got backed up systems so sometimes you can totally redo a house but because until a house gets used again, there's stuff that won't show up on an inspection or right. something like that. So either that happened or at, in the backyard, which we can look at uh, up there, there might be some tree roots or something like that. 
as opposed to seeing something like this and scaring me, when I see something like this, I actually feel better about the situation. Okay. And here's why, because if there would be a problem here again, I know that it can be easily removed and replaced. Also, there's an entry point right here. So now you would want to not be using any of the sewage systems, flushing toilets, running the dishwasher at the time. But if there was a a, a clog below this or above this, you can snake from this point. Oh or you can also snake and go like out, you know, if you wanted to put in foaming root killer because there was, you know, root problems or stuff like that, you can put that in here as opposed to someplace up wherever else in the system where it might dilute by the time that it gets there. Got it. Okay. That makes so much sense. Yeah, so see that's I wouldn't have even thought about that. I am I am by no means the smartest person on, <laughs> on, on, on real estate and houses, but if you just pick up a couple of these things as we move along, uh it just it just really helps. Over here, Raquel, help me out here, but I'm guessing even without checking to see behind. This looks like a gas line and then this is a flexible gas line here. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing if I were to check, this gas line connects to this dryer. Is yes, that correct? Does, correct? So we so we have a uh a now, if you were to rent this, would you leave the washer and dryer here or yes. would you take that with you? Uh, I would leave it here only because I, I know what it's like to want to drag your laundry right. all the way to the laundromat and right. it gets full. But I would totally leave that as a, hey, washer and dryer in the basement. Just so you know, an option that you have is if you wanted to take this. Now, usually people leave it behind because they're looking for an excuse to buy themselves new stuff. Yeah, <laughs> So, <laughs> so um, you could use this as an excuse to buy new stuff, um, but even if you even if you decided to take it with you, okay, okay you can still market it as washer dryer hookups. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, and and it really okay. doesn't. It's nice because it adds some convenience and it's and it um, it makes things simpler on the people who, who live here. But never feel bad, dear listeners, if you're leaving and you have to take the washer and dryer with you. But wives, if you want to uh, use it as an excuse to sell your husbands on the need to get new stuff, by all means, uh, use it to get new stuff. Now, the strategy that Raquel and I talked about was waiting three to five to seven years and, and deciding to potentially sell this at some point down in the future. And if you were going to sell it, I would upgrade this kitchen. So I would do what you did in the rest of the house, remove the paneling, remove the, uh, the drywall that, that you see, upgrade the kitchen cabinets. The kitchen cabinets are not that bad, but like that little gingerbread bricker brack up there at the top, you know, it just gives it the brass, just gives it a very dated look. The, the, the stove again, this is actually really nice uh, for a B quality rental. Uh, it's certainly serviceable. Um, I would put luxury vinyl plank in here in the kitchen. And who knows? Five to seven years from now, there might be even uh, a better product out there. We can't see, well, we can't see the backyard, but we can see that there's some tree activity here in the neighborhood. Um, this is kind of a cool backyard patio. That's kind of big and I, you're not seeing how big that is on the uh, video, but it's really nice. Um, back here into the kitchen. Again, so windows are a little bit dated, would work just fine, but I can tell that they were replaced at some point, but these look like they're about 10 to 15 year old, maybe even more than that, replacement windows. They're certainly not the original windows. And when you would sell it, that might be something that you would want to do. So this is paneling, which is painted over and perfectly acceptable application. Even when you redo this years from now, I would not, um, I would not change that. I would obviously redo the carpet here when you sell. So the second floor car, second floor hardwood floor, forgive me why I chase words, uh, looks like it's a little bit more worn. So they probably had carpet in the bedrooms and this was just never carpeted, even when the downstairs was carpeted. Three bedrooms up here. This one is kind of a little bit on the smaller side, but it is big enough uh, for Maryland. Hey, Maryland. Uh, and that's nice. I, so I like that, you know, that's obviously kind of like a little dressing room there and everything like that. What's going on here? So did we have a roof leak problem? See, when we, um, I took the drop ceiling off because I didn't want to get dressed in fluorescent lighting. Right. And we put up um, drywall. Right. Now, a very, very, very good friend of mine did it, wanted to help, but wasn't, you know, right. professional. Right. So, yep, I got water and that is badly good. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so, yeah, just yeah. one thing to take care of and address. Man, I don't know. And I got to tell you, Raquel, I do not envy you this choice 
because this is pretty cool crown molding that when you come time to sell, not when you rent, uh -huh. but when it comes time to sell, you're going to have to make a decision. Do I want to keep that <laughs> or do I want to go? Because sometimes if it's left and not done right, it gives it, you have the opposite effect. You have an right. aged look where what you're really looking for is, you know, kind of bring in, you know, you, you want to leave some of those elements to bring back some of those uh, glory times for the house. Just a bedroom here. Same Nothing big or fancy or special there. Obviously, we're in the process of removing drywall here or removing uh, wallpaper. wallpaper and painting here. Hi, Judith. How are you? Um, and that's great. I, I also... I got to tell you, I love see. I'm not going to get so close so I, nobody can see it. But like my dad didn't teach me how to hunt fish or play golf, but yeah. my dad taught me how to paint. Did he? So I've done tons and tons of houses uh, and I always love peeling old drywall and seeing uh, what's behind. Well, Raquel, you've been a great host and I appreciate it very much. And I think that you've learned a lot. And I think I that some other people have learned a lot about this house. And I think that it was really great first deal I'm for I'm excited. You. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Hey everybody, so again, you don't wanna judge a book by its cover uh, just because you see sub neighborhoods that have very low um, architectural detail on the outside does not mean that that's what you're gonna find inside and also really think instead of buying a different house for your first rental property, could the house that I live in serve as my first rental property uh, and then I get an excuse to buy a new house for myself that maybe fits my needs better now that I'm in a different phase of life than what I was originally. Hope you learned something uh, from that uh, walkthrough and uh, be sure to like be sure to subscribe uh, share this video with some others I've got a ton more on the page uh, just like it this is Judah Hoover with the landlords and investors mastermind group thanks have a good day